Hello everybody, this is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the fundamentals analyzer software tool. And back in July of 2018, I was asked that by a subscriber request to cover the bank, Bank of Ozark. And I produced a video, as you can see here, on July 23rd, 2018. This is not a company that I had personally invested in, but when I was asked to look at it, I was quite enthralled with the company. And I don't mind saying that today because if I look at it historically, the company's earnings growth had averaged over 19.1% percent a year and this orange line on the graph represents a PE ratio of 19.1 and anywhere the price would be touching this line that would be a PE of 19. This is a PE equals growth rate type situation. You could see that the stock price tracked that occasionally got disconnected from the orange line above and below but it looked extremely undervalued at that time. The PE blended PE was 12.7 dividend yield was 1.9 the stock looked very very inexpensive and therefore I gave it a relatively glowing report because at that time with the facts that I had at hand that was basically a rational statement or a rational belief that the company was extremely undervalued and looked very very attractive as a long-term investment. I also showed the company's historical performance and as you can see it was a stellar performer dramatically outperforming the market on every way significantly almost 10 times as much dividend income you know, significant outperformance on capital appreciation. Total return was just spectacular. This was truly a great investment based on the history that the company had earned and achieved for its shareholders going back to calendar year 2000. In that video and article, I also showed forecasting. I want to show you a couple of things here. Number one is that for 2018, the company was forecast to earn 362 by data analysts and then $4 by 2019 and then 436, but it dropped down to three analysts. As I point out in these videos, I'd like to stay close here. The idea is that the closer we are, the more likely we are for the forecast to be correct. And by the way, the company had an impeccable analyst scorecard at that time. The analysts had been virtually correct 100% of the time up to this point. Now, what I'm doing now is I want to update this video for you because it's very, very important to recognize that when you're conducting research on common stocks, I've always said this, and I say this over and over again over my entire career, we're continuous or constant due diligence and research is always necessary if you own stocks. That's one reason why I like to suggest that people don't own too many stocks. They own just enough that they can keep track of because you have to keep track of what's going on with your common stock investments if you expect to be successful long term. So here we are a couple of years later and let's look at what's actually gone on with Bank of Ozark over that time. This red dot, this is approximately the time frame that I had produced the first article. At the end of June, I produced the article at the end of July. So it's right in this area right here. And this is what Bank of Ozark looked like. Now, at that time, keep in mind the earnings growth rate was high it was over 19 percent for the time frame i've got drawn here it was 20 percent these are dynamic numbers so this pink line was the 19.1 pe ratio that i had on that graph that i produced back in 2018 and the stock you know looked undervalued based on these fundamentals and fundamentals actually didn't really fall off a cliff immediately that's what's very interesting but let me bring this out now and expand this graph to current time and look at what happened. Now I did a little bit of research looking around to see what would have caused this to happen. I don't own this stock and I didn't own the stock and I guess I'm fortunate that I didn't. I hope no one else did either but if you did I hope you were paying attention because what happened was earnings collapsed in 2019. They actually did not meet the original expectations that I showed you a moment ago but they still were pretty good but then now we've coming into a period with COVID because this company as you can see by a Zach's report here the company generates a lot of business on real estate loans and as a consequence we've now had this big collapse in earnings and we've had this big collapse in stock price. The forecasting graph that we're looking at now is, looks entirely different. The PE ratio I'm looking at is a more normal 15 PE ratio and again we had this 54 percent drop in earnings and this was a constant issue by the way. In six months ago we were down to 297 forecast. Three months ago we were down to 292. The most recent estimate was down to 150 so now we've had this 50 percent plus drop in earnings which you know obviously explains why the stock has taken such a hit now the company is expected to recover a lot of this was the COVID-19 generated with the real estate not being able to collect rents and so on and so forth and again I haven't gone real deep into this stock but things have changed and it was once attributed to John Maynard Keynes there's some controversy whether he actually said this there's talk that Warren Buffett made a similar statement recently and that is 
when the facts change, you have to change your mind. Well, the real reality of that is, is not that you want to be fickle with your attitude, but what you have to do is you have to keep updating the facts and make sure that they stay current. Because again, no one would have seen the COVID-19 here, but this company had a tremendous deterioration in operating results. Now that could either be temporary or permanent. That's really what you have to decide as an investor. So now when we look at forecasting today, the stock again looks very attractive, assuming these recovery you know numbers come out to be what they are, because even at 15 times earnings, you'd have a tremendous rate of return on this stock looking forward on it. Now, the real question is, is it going to be able to accomplish these things? Is the forecast going to be better? Now, you can see that the longer term forecast deteriorated quite a bit. They went from, you know, being virtually 100% certain to being wrong 18% of the time. And of course, they were really wrong in these most recent years. So now we've got a significant change in the company's growth rate. It's still averaging 16%, by the way. So this has still been a very, very fast growth growing company historically. It's what we're currently running into here with COVID that has changed things dramatically and the price has obviously been killed. Now, what I think we have to decide or try to determine if we're interested in investing in this stock, what's going to happen in the future? Is it going to recover? Is it going to go back to more normalized earnings? And by the way, these earnings estimates that we're currently looking at are still far short of what the analysts were looking at, you know, just even a few months ago. You can see, you know, in that original video I showed, we were looking at much higher numbers than we're currently seeing on the stock. So things have changed with this company. The real question is, is it permanent or is it temporary? Now, I still think it's a great company. It's a great bank. It has only 16% debt to capital. It has a great long-term record. It's generally been conservatively run. You know, is this strictly a COVID situation that we have to, you know, overlook and be willing to take a position in the stock now and buy it? Or is it a long-term value trap? I think the only answer to that question is to get into the stock and really do some research. But what has happened here is fully explainable relative to what's happened to the fundamentals of the business. And, you know, one of the things that I found interesting when I looked at here was to look at it more from a cash flow perspective. So when I look at EBITDA, you know, the stock was trading at a probably high valuation relative to its EBITDA when I wrote the article. And then EBITDA has only flattened up, got no forecast going forward. You know, this would be 19 times EBITDA. Ignore that. I just didn't take that line off the graph. This pink line has no relevance. Anyway, looking at this stock today, it's a very, very interesting company. It's a high quality bank. It's been around a long time. They're definitely going going through some issues with their real estate loans. The stock has been really beat up and, you know, is it significantly below what its intrinsic value is? I know currently if I looked at this from a valuation point of view, you know, I would put value at somewhere in the mid-20s. I did notice I went through Morningstar and looked at Morningstar, and I'll go ahead and do that for you very quickly. And Morningstar is giving this stock a fair value estimate of around, we'll say 28, 27 to 28. And, you know, it's currently trading at 20. So Morningstar sees the stock is undervalued as well. The bottom line is things have really changed dramatically with this company. And it's changed, you know, for the worst, obviously, at least temporarily. But, you know, I'm not so sure that all of this is really at the company's fault. This is something that if you're interested in learning more about this stock, I would suggest going into their website, reading their earnings transcripts, um, checking other sources of research if you have any. You know, it's one that I do believe is extremely inexpensive today. And it's really been a horrible performer over the last couple of years. But what's really interesting about this, even in light of all of the horrible performance we've gone through for the last two years, this company has still outperformed by orders of magnitude over its long-term history. So do we give credit to its history and ignore what's currently going on and believe that the future will be bright again for this stock? Or do we you know, say this was a big mistake and uh, we walk away? I'll let you decide for yourself. Anyway, if you liked what you saw here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've also got another request to talk about CVS and Walgreens Boots Alliance. There's a lot of things have obviously changed with COVID. So I'm going to be doing some updated videos here to try to bring you up to date on some of the things that we've looked at in the past. Anyway, it's been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching.